Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from whatever location you are tuning in. Happy to invite you for another episode of the, of the Point, where we have conversations with thought leaders on different aspects of issues affecting our society. And today on set, we are privileged to have a man who's going to tell us uh, who briefly who he is and what he does before we have this conversation. Karibu. Santa Sana. My name is Sachilo Gotu um, with a Pan-African group called ICA Group. And it is within the financial services space dealing with the investment banking, asset management, wealth management, and uh, global markets. So I am working as an economist, uh, looking at a number of countries uh, within the asset management business. Over to you. Thank you so much, Churchill. And I've been your host. I'm your, I'm your host, Duncan. And we're going to have this conversation to try and unpack a number of issues affecting our country at the moment. Uh, thank you, Churchill. Uh, to put things in context, we want to make an appreciation of um, the supplementary budget. Um, and uh, a couple of things come to mind when you talk about supplementary budget. We know the law provides for supplementary budget in unavoidable circumstances. Uh, but one wonders, is the government abusing its supplementary window? Or um, uh, is it about time that uh, we call it something else uh, rather than supplementary? Because um, one wonders, is the government capacity to plan and budget being called to question, capacity to plan and budget for 12 months being called to question. Is it about time that the government adopts planning for six months and having another budget for six months? Uh, are they abusing the supplementary window? Uh, thanks uh, for that. And uh, Article 2 to 3 of the Constitution, that's where there is normally a window for anything that is out of uh, emergency yes. need that might uh, come up yes. within the media mm. budget execution. Yes. But what we have seen time and again is that uh, there are number there are normally two supplementary budgets mm -hmm. in any given year since I think the last ten years mm -hmm. we've been seeing that that has been the norm. Yes, I think financial year 2019-2020 we had three, yes. uh, three supplementary budgets. Subs, yes. uh, the last one being introduced a week to the end of the, the financial year. Financial year. Yes. So it obviously brings to the question mm -hmm. how we actually come up with the budget by uh, the budget projections mm -hmm. or how the budget estimates shall be because it may not be able to bring uh, these issues that are attended to the supplementary budgets uh, that you normally have. And one of the things, if you specifically narrow down to this uh, supplementary budget two, mm -hmm. we have the supplementary budget one, which was passed around November. Yes. And then we have this supplementary budget two. Which is two months to the end of a financial year. Two months to the end of the financial mm. year. Actually one. Yes. Exactly. Yes, yeah. Because yes. right now uh, mm. we may we're not in the dying days. We're in the mid days of May. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and the issue now that is coming to the fore is that there obviously there's been some emergency uh, uh, needs that have cropped up in mm -hmm. the last one month or so. Mm -hmm. um, majorly, El Nino, the drought and floods mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. So, if my reading of the supplementary budget too that has been tabled. Mm -hmm has pretty much sort of uh, included those items which ideally this have been emergency nature, emergency nature. Mm. but this ones just came in the, the last uh, four or five weeks ago mm. but over and above that we remember that uh, this supplementary budget had mm -hmm. already been preempted yes. as early as uh, january yes. this is within Actually the context we of, in march yes mm -hmm. within the context of the imf mm. uh, program mm. and the report that came out in january yes. which preempted a mm. supplementary by end of march yes. but basically this supplementary was coming uh, to because of the lower revenue mm -hmm. that was anticipated to be collected within this financial year mm. so basically just correcting uh, the budget yes. to be able to accommodate the lower revenue mm -hmm. so i think that is also another context yes. that we've been seeing supplementary budgets mm -hmm. over the last 10 years and also uh, speaks to this supplementary budget okay uh, but having said that mm -hmm. uh, the reduction mm. is I expected more reduction mm -hmm. in terms of the spending, what needs to be spent mm -hmm. over this uh, remaining period. Year. Yes, yes. So the reduction of around 46 billion mm -hmm. in terms of what goes to the national government, mm -hmm. I think is still uh, small vis-a-vis -vis the revenue mm -hmm. that is anticipated to be collected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Churchill. I, I hold a view for the longest time, and not even time has improved it, that uh, as a country we do not have a revenue problem. What we have is an expenditure problem.
and that should uh, be uh, should be uh, things that guide uh, any adjustment to the budget and and you see um from the supplementary that budget that we have do you think uh the revenue targets uh, that were projected then and that has been revised uh about to be achieved by the end of the financial year in the least uh, last quarter of the financial year okay so if you look at the autumn mm -hmm. uh, the numbers we have is up until march mm. of this year yes this is from july last year to march, to march this yes. year so yes. the first nine months mm. uh in terms of uh, the ordinary revenue mm -hmm. by ordinary revenue that is the tax revenue yes. and also the non-tax non -tax revenue yes. mm. so uh, the amount that has been collected so far mm -hmm. has fallen short by around 255 billion, billion yes and appropriation in aid uh did well mm. they managed to collect 270 billion mm. but it fell short by the around target, 15 yeah. billion mm. there about so in terms of the revenue uh outlook mm. i'm still not that convinced that we'll be able to hit the target mm -hmm. uh obviously the supplementary budget two revises it lower by around 100 billion mm -hmm. from 2.5 trillion to around 2.4 trillion. trillion yes but still that means that the last quarter mm. from april to june mm -hmm uh carry and also the government because there's a bit of some non-tax revenues to be collected mm. uh <clears throat> we need to see uh a collection of 1.4 trillion yes so that's roughly uh, over 400 billion yes i don't think we'll be able to meet that in the last quarter in the last april yes, to june to june so that now even uh, <clears throat> leads to the realism mm. of the targets mm -hmm. revenue targets yes uh, within this current financial year okay i'm still having my doubts okay thank you um to my mind there are two ways you can finance the supplemented budget one it could be through the usual borrowing yeah. and two it could be reallocation of the budget the, the the items within the budget yeah what approach are they using are they, are they, are they proposing to use in this subs too uh well it's it's sort of a blend yes uh, <laughs> uh, in terms of uh the in the ordinary revenue mm -hmm. coming lower mm. uh slightly but i found something quite interesting mm -hmm. the investment income which is also part of the ordinary revenue, revenue yes i saw that line item uh, going higher by around 55 billion mm. and it's somewhat tied to mopping some of the surplus funds from the parastatals yes which i think these are one-offs i think we saw it the last time they did that was around two mm -hmm. or three fiscal years yes. uh behind yes uh, but these are usually one of just mopping of the excess uh surplus funds that are held by parastatals mm -hmm. so that but even within that context yes. we are still seeing a reduction in revenue mm -hmm. uh, by around 100 billion yes. obviously uh, the uh, the uh, expenditure also has come lower mm -hmm. uh, collectively we are looking at around 123 billion mm. uh, both the spending to the national government mm -hmm. and also some reduction in what we call the consolidated fund services, fund services which yes. includes interest payments and pension, also salary, pension to state officers, and salary to the state officers yes. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, remarkably i think they are also implying uh withdrawal of the support to kenya airways mm -hmm. so if i may take you two fiscal years back mm -hmm. uh whereby because of the issues surrounding kenya airways yes now the government now started paying interest mm -hmm. uh for on behalf of kenya airways mm -hmm. so that was included under the guaranteed debt yes. payment so we mm -hmm. saw a spike of around 17 to 18 billion, billion yes so with the supplementary budget too mm -hmm. actually we are seeing that budget line now entirely being removed mm -hmm. it's somewhat tied to what was within the imf program mm -hmm. that by end of april we mm -hmm. need to see the government rather coming up with a, a restructuring for kq mm. options around kq restructuring mm. Mm. so probably that speaks to probably they have something in the pipeline mm. now that they are removing this uh budget item, item yes. uh, so that is also now speaking to the reduction within the uh, consolidated fund services yeah okay so i'm mm. seeing a blend mm. of both three allocation of the budget items yeah uh, and, and also borrowing exactly okay yeah. okay um i think a couple of days ago i read in the papers that are the likes of uh these roads authorities, I think the Skera Kura, Kenha, one of them, is among the prostitutes holding in excess of 200 billion in the banks, idle cash. Uh, 
why under what circumstances would, uh, would would this arise and uh were this part of things that were factored in this in the sub supplementary too yeah so collectively all the parastatals that were captured there in the report mm -hmm. uh, collectively as at december last year mm -hmm. the surplus funds is the 200 billion mm. 201 billion and one yes they're about here mm. so how does it even end up that <laughs> yes. parasitos are holding this excess cash yes i think it's uh it's it's uh probably speaks to lower budget execution because ordinarily mm. the monies that goes to the parasitos are either now supposed yes. to mm. be disbursed mm. uh and it also speaks to the large uh domestic areas which we, we usually call pending bills mm. uh probably it's it's somewhat tied to that mm. i haven't really dug the numbers to mm -hmm. to see what's actually happening over there yes but the other thing that is being suggested mm -hmm. is all about the treasury single account mm. which has been somewhat preempted either in the supplementary to mm. or even or, the, or the next the budget, budget yes yeah, mm. whereby the ministries department and agencies yes will now be will all the accounts will be held at the central bank of kenya mm -hmm. but now the parastatals yes. which this excess surplus we're talking about at least they'll be having the accounts with commercial banks mm. but treasury will be having some oversight, oversight that, yeah. that so probably uh, now that they have an idea mm. the kind of surplus funds that are held by parastatals mm -hmm. i think that is now geared towards that uh, treasury single account but hybrid mm. model mm. mds central bank of mm. kenya but not the parastatals within the commercial banks okay. but oversight by okay. treasury uh, thank you another thing that uh, um would uh, observers would be keen to interrogate is the fact that uh, uh if you if you look at subs to uh the budget has been uh, trimmed to 3.84 trillion Mm -hmm. um but if you look at the budget for the uh, for the for the year starting july 1 uh you you realize that uh, it's about 4.7 trillion but in excess of 4 trillion uh if from where we are uh clearly tells that uh even by the fact that we are trimming our budget downwards either we had or we had uh, overestimated or um the revenue performance is not coming in the way we'd expected and therefore is it about time that we have a, re a realistic budget uh because uh, clearly i can assure you that uh, even the budget for the upcoming financial year uh this is not the end of supplementary budget because uh it's it's like you do not eat because there is food so you do not have you do not exhaust uh, mechanisms of saps because it it exists yeah. but uh, is it possible that we can have a 12 months uh that has nothing that we just stick to the budget has passed in in april 30th uh, there's something you said, uh, having a realistic budget, yes. is this something you can do? I mean, that's long overdue. We need yes. to be having realistic budgets. Mm. But looking at the numbers, mm. uh, as at the budget that was passed mm. in June mm. for the current financial year yes. that is coming to an end, mm. that was around 3.7 trillion shillings. Yes. Yes. Uh, after supplementary budget one, mm. uh, supplementary budget one year, mm. uh, it went higher yes. by 3.9 trillion. Yes. Now with this supplementary budget two, mm -hmm. we are seeing that it's expected to come lower to 3.8 trillion. Eight, yes. mm. Now, if you now jump to the next financial year, mm. uh, which is still we are actually in that process of uh, the budget making, mm. uh, initially, mm -hmm. the budget that was passed, mm. or rather, the, we had this whole process started in August, yes. but the budget policy statement that was tabled in February, in February this year, yes. Parliament approved mm. it eventually around March, mm. but that was around 4.18 yes. trillion mm. shillings. Mm. So right now what we are seeing mm. is that uh, the budget mm. has now scaled down to around 3.9 trillion. So there's trillion. a reduction of 240, 240 billion. Uh, billion shillings okay. here. Mm. So if you compare the supplementary budget to mm -hmm. 3.8 trillion mm -hmm. and the next supplementary uh, the the budget for the next financial year mm -hmm. 3.91 trillion mm -hmm. so there's just an increment of 100 billion 100 billion, 100 billion mm. yes but then again uh, how realistic is it 
It's uh, if you look at it mm. uh, in terms of uh, the revenue side, we are seeing an increase of 500 billion mm -hmm. uh, from 2.4 trillion to mm -hmm. 2.9 trillion. Mm -hmm. It's not realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever we may start thinking, uh, we still haven't seen the finance bill. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, looking at the medium term revenue strategy, there are a number of uh, tax proposals mm -hmm. that have been sort of implied mm -hmm. a reduction in some of the tax reliefs, mm -hmm. uh, reduction in the corporate income tax. Mm -hmm. uh, value added tax uh, which should be done gradually mm. from the next financial year up until the financial year ending june 2027 yes. there's some gradual mm. approach to towards implementing some of the tax proposals yes but i don't think that those measures that will be implemented in the next financial year mm -hmm. will now be able to realize an additional 500 billion yes. from what has been the target for this financial year. Mm. Uh, the other thing that I'm seeing uh, is, in, well, we need to applaud the government mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the cuts that you've seen. Yes. Uh, the budget, the estimates that were tabled in parliament mm. uh, to the national government yes. uh, is around um, uh, 2.3 uh, 2 mm. trillion. Trillion, yes vis-a-vis -vis 2.56 trillion mm. which was approved by parliament two months ago, two months ago yes. so there's a reduction of 242 billion mm -hmm. interesting mm. is that uh you see treasury mm. table the estimates to what you call the executive yes. ministries department and mm. agencies mm. judicial judiciary service commission mm -hmm. table what goes to the judiciary mm -hmm. so what was approved by parliament which was around 23 billion mm -hmm. that's pretty much the numbers that judiciary service commission Actually, tabled yes parliament mm -hmm. what they had approved for parliament mm -hmm. budget was around 43 mm. billion mm. what was uh, what was tabled by parliamentary service commission, commission was yes. higher than 22 billion mm. So already is telling you that there's normally some spending mm. uh, impulse or mm. there's some spending pressures mm. that may crop up. Mm. So in as much as as much as it's plod, uh, we need to applaud the government that we are seeing a reduction in spending mm -hmm. for the next financial year. Mm -hmm. I still have some doubts. Mm. Uh, remember that this whole budget process is uh, it started all the way in August last year. Mm -hmm what during the macro sector working group this is happened around october, october november, november yes, about, yes. Mm. the budget requirements by the to the national government was around 4.1 trillion. trillion yes but what was allocated was 2.2 trillion mm. and then went to budget policy statement mm. uh, it was in, it it went higher to around 2.5 trillion mm -hmm. so right now it's 2.3 trillion mm. as what was what has been tabled mm -hmm. but remember it's still a process yes uh, budget appropriation committee mm -hmm. will now start uh, engaging other house committees mm -hmm. and i'm pretty much sure that there'll be one or two budget items mm -hmm. from the committee mm -hmm. that might also be brought in uh, to the table which mm -hmm. might eventually be included mm -hmm. so i'm not uh, ruling that one out remember mm -hmm. i mean it was sometime last week mm -hmm. we heard from the roads ministry yes. that this they need 700 billion mm -hmm. to extend the yes, SGR yeah. from uh, um, Naivasha to Malaba, to Malaba. Mm -hmm. that hasn't been penciled in so mm -hmm. It may not entirely be executed within the next financial year. Mm -hmm. So even if you're looking at uh, two, three fiscal years to mm -hmm. extend the SGR from Naivasha to Malaba, Malaba yes. you are looking at an additional 250 billion mm -hmm. uh, to the budget. So mm -hmm. already I'm seeing some spending pressures. Mm. So to your question, yes. I don't think it's still realistic. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Sachil, um, a, num a number of uh, terms have been thrown around uh, uh, around us for some time by this yeah. government. So it's important for kin observers to try and make sense of them and whether they are just uh, mere rhetoric or they are in, in, in practice. One of the terms around this issue of uh, economic management is fiscal consolidation. So for the benefit of folks who never had the background that you and I have, what is fiscal consolidation and uh, is the government of the day practicing it or is it just mere rhetoric? Uh, thanks for that. So let's just give it some context uh, from the two sides of it. Uh, <clears throat> can think of it as two sides of the same coin uh, in terms of the budget implementation and execution. Uh, so one side you can think of it of now the expenditure 
uh, what goes to the national government, what are the prioritized items in the budget, interest payments, uh, pension, and also what goes to the counties. So that's one side of it. But this has to be funded. Uh, primarily, it has to be funded by what you call revenue, total revenues. Uh, this is now tax revenue, non-tax revenue. We also have what you call appropriation in aid. Uh, if you go to Nyo House to go like and uh, apply for passports, exactly, if you go to the parks, mm -hmm. those things. So that's part of the appropriation in aid. Yes. So, and also we have the grants uh, by uh, bilateral lenders, mm -hmm. nations. So all that is now total revenue and grants, <clears throat> ideally should now be able to fund the expenditure. But ordinarily that, uh, that usually n never happens. So we have, government has to go and borrow uh, externally and also domestically. Mm. So that borrowing aspect, at least to be able to fund the expenditure, uh, it needs to reduce as a percentage of GDP. Mm. Uh, we are within the East Africa community. The target is 3% by uh, fiscal year, I think 2027, 2028. 20, yes. Yeah, so that is the target. And if you look at how we've been borrowing as a percentage of GDP, uh, there's been some, we've been overshooting even the targets that we have. Uh, yes, yes, yes. We've been quite ambitious. Mm -hmm. When you started this financial year, mm -hmm. the aspiration was that that fiscal deficit, now we call the fiscal deficit, mm -hmm. the borrowing as a percentage of GDP was 4.4% on our way to 3.3% by fiscal year 2027 20, 28 year but with the supplementary budget yes. one it increased to 5.5 percent mm -hmm. and now we are looking at a supplementary budget two mm -hmm. which is increasing it slightly to 5.6 percent but if we look at the next financial year we might say that fiscal consolidation is happening mm -hmm. in the sense that from this 5.6 percent in the current financial year it's projected to go lower to 2.9 percent. Imagine it's even lower than the three percent that we are sparing as East Africa that community. But we need to put some context to it. Remember that we are within the IMF program, and obviously there's some uh, they want to show some commitment to a fiscal consolidation as we come to the end of this IMF program. So the numbers in terms of uh, the revenue side and also the reduction or at least ensuring that the spending is pretty much stable as where we are current financial year these numbers are pretty much the same levels as we head into the next financial year it's now what the government aspires it to be but i still don't think that it will be achievable i still have my reservations the other thing, uh, probably may discuss the IMF later, but there's now what you call the primary uh, balance. Yes. So there's the fiscal balance, mm -hmm. now what you've been talking for the current financial year, 5.6%. Yes. Yes. Now the fiscal balance is now this expenditure, mm -hmm. you now remove the interest payments yes. of it yes. out, of, out of this expenditure, what needs to be the spending by the government. Mm -hmm. uh, the current financial year, the interest payments, mm -hmm. what we pay to domestic to service the domestic debt, mm -hmm. and the interest to service the external debt is around eight hundred billion, mm -hmm. thereabout. In total. In total. Yes, yes. The next financial year is going to one trillion mm -hmm. shillings. So there's an increase of two hundred billion year um, over, and above, yes. over and above year what we are paying meant to pay in the current financial year. Mm -hmm. A significant a significant part of it is now payment to domestic debt, servicing domestic debt. So, and if you look at now the primary balance, the IMF, in terms of the current program, will want it to be at one of four billion by end of June at the primary balance. The revenue, what you're picking as revenue and grants, and then reduce the, uh, you, re you exclude this uh this minor spending but now exclude the interest payments it's supposed to be one of five billion as an end of june but within the context of supplementary budget uh we are saying that that primary balance is now flipping is it will be a negative not a primary balance a surplus 
it will be a primary negative number so obviously i think it may not sit well with the imf going into the next financial year because we have higher interest payments we have a higher tax revenue ordinary revenue target we have a whopping 470 billion as a primary balance which in percentage of gdp is around 2.7 percent that is quite ambitious so in that context i think uh yeah the fiscal consolidation we are trying to fit in within the imf programs aspirations because if you look at the from fiscal year that is ending june 2026 the other fiscal year onwards we are still reverting back to 3.3 3.4 percent so i'm still not entirely convinced this 2.9 percent for the next financial year is just to ensure that we're in the imf's good, good books okay. yeah uh, one of the things uh, that kenyans gave themselves in this constitution is um the emphasis on sovereignty uh we the people uh, we are sovereign uh, I know where you're going, but continue. <laughs> <laughs> Public participation, but continue. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. As opposed to the the main budget, yes. you know, there is there's some semblance of public participation. Yeah. Uh, we don't quite so much see m m more and more of it on the, the supplementary budget. Yes. Uh, is it by design or is it by default? I think it's by design mm -hmm. and also by default mm -hmm. uh, because uh, by default in the sense if you go to the constitution uh, and also the PFM public finance management yes. acts emphasis is within the context of the initial budget mm -hmm. uh, and this needs to be done uh, public participation so within the PFM acts uh, it speaks to the initial budget rather than subsequent budgets so if you look at now uh, by uh, the time frame or if it start looking at the practicability of having public participation for supplementary budgets uh, it tends to be i think tricky because uh, one is that the supplementary budgets picks on the spending side uh these adjustments uh you remove one billion here you increase one billion there i mean it speaks to the supplement uh, it speaks to the expenditure side of the equation and that i think how it's so far it's been done table uh treasury now tables the supplementary budget uh the budget appropriation committee has engagements with the uh, the respective uh committee houses uh, respective individual uh, committees with that are involved within the the house so that's pretty much as far as it goes rather than having the people coming to give their views uh, to the supplementary budget probably might have some um <laughs> <Thumbs up. laughs> Probably may have some uh, some 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 guide guide posts or some uh, some guiding lines because you know that uh, parliamentarians they are acting as oversight they have the oversight responsibility now it just are we, we now hope that they will act on behalf of of the people not the sovereignty because we are the ones who have given them the mandate to to represent us so that is now the our last lingering hope in terms of that but in terms of uh, the adjustments that are being done in, uh, even on the revenue side uh, obviously there's some hue and cries whenever we have the finance bills now speaks to the revenue raising measures we never see that even being incorporated uh, within the supplementary budget framework so probably that's where now we never see that public participation uh, within supplementary budgets yeah um given that uh, there is some attempts towards uh, bringing down the fiscal deficit uh from from what the government is communicating through its documents um do you think um the recently enacted or passed national tax policy is uh, a good starting point yeah. or do you think it didn't cure every 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 gap that needs to be cured to 
put us towards a farm up towards consolidating the, 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 the tax and non tax revenue. I think national tax policy uh, was one policy that, I mean, by all intent is now at least giving people the, it's, it's removing this uncertainty mm. because each and every fiscal year, there are normally a number of tax proposals, amendments. Mm. So at least the tax policy is trying to bring the predictability. Mm. And over and above that, uh, we also have the medium term revenue strategy. Mm. So because even the, from a budget perspective, budget policy statement mm. is kind of strategy uh, for the budget numbers, but uh, in terms of the what needs where, where the expenditure will look like. But now with the medium term revenue strategy, it's giving us a strategy of how the potential tax proposals that will be over the next uh, three years, because uh, this one is all the way up until 20, uh, June 2020, but it's being implemented in two phases. The first one is now from the next financial year up until June 2027, and then the other one from July 2027 to June 2030. So at least it's uh, what we have is now for the first phase of the medium term, uh, whereby as at June 2023, our ordinary revenue to GDP was around 14.3%. So the aim of the medium term revenue strategy is to increase it to 20%. Uh, so that is now by all intent of the medium term revenue strategy, that is what it implements, it, it aims to achieve uh, a number of measures here and there. So what we are seeing, and also it did something which we've never seen, like this financial year, they'll be able to tweak a few things, income tax, value added tax, excess duty. So at least it's giving people some predictability, rather than when you see the finance bill for the very first time, and then you have this shock, what is all this? So at least in terms of predictability, the medium term revenue strategy has done some it's, it's quite terrific from that front to 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 remove the layer of uncertainty in terms of now implementation because it now boils down to the even the capacity for kra because all this mtrs uh, medium term revenue strategy tax policy is now on the policy side but you also need to incorporate the administration administrative uh, side implementation yeah so right now uh, what Kenya should be keeping an eye on is now the Kenya Revenue Authority, uh, the ninth corporate plan. Yes. So they normally have like three year implementation plans of what they want now to, uh, to bring to life these whole policies, these strategies that have been put in place. So that is what I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, so if the intent, the last uh, corporate plan uh, that is coming to an end by June this year, they wanted, I think, to to see the, the number of taxpayers going at, at 6 million. So where are we and what is the plan the next three uh, fiscal years? So I mean, uh, those are some of the things that should tell us how achievable it will be at least to be able to implement these policies okay uh, churchill as, as as we come to uh, the last bit on this discussion conversation on on, on saps uh, supplementary um the, the president and and the government by extension um was mulling through an initiative for land for want of a better word i would call it so to embark on this privatization journey. And a number of uh, entities had been earmarked for privatization. And it is deemed that the proceeds of privatization will help in providing an injection to uh, budget support. Um, do we see such efforts uh, in the supplementary budget? Or we wait to try and uh, look for them in the <laughs> estimate? <laughs> <laughs> well, mm. We are seeing, uh, at least uh, by all indication, is that uh, they would want to continue the privatization. Mm -hmm. And it's all planned with the, starting with the, even that is part of the state ownership mm -hmm. of the SOEs. Mm -hmm. State owned entities. Yes. Owned entities, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's been strategies around mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. as I mean, part of the IMF program. Mm -hmm. But even within the context of supplementary too, mm -hmm. uh, this 
talked about having done some preliminary mm. evaluation of close to 288 mm. uh, parastatals, mm -hmm. of which the as per the assessment, mm -hmm. they will want to see 158 mm -hmm. continue as they are. Mm -hmm. And then the plan is now to have uh, to privatize 25 mm -hmm. uh, of the parastatals. Yes. I think back then, to October, November, there about there was a there was a there was a report mm. that alluded to the parastatals that had been earmarked, earmarked for, uh, privatization. for privatization. Yes. Yes. So I think it should it should be if they pursue it, mm. uh, that will be a great plan. Mm -hmm. And the proceeds from the SOE's mm. uh, privatization, mm -hmm. if it now goes towards, uh, rather than going to the market to borrow, mm -hmm. we have this pool, probably they may now find a way of ring fencing it. Mm -hmm. uh, and now that is where they'll be able to s sort of support the budget. Mm. I think that will be ideal mm. if they do it the proper way. Mm. Obviously, just keeping an eye of, uh, I think by June, mm. this, this coming month, mm -hmm. we should get a policy around SOE's, SOE's. Uh, reforms, mm. which will give us some, some, light. some light. Obviously, this government, when it came in, uh, the talk initially was that 10, we should see 10 privatization mm. through the capital markets via IPA initial mm. Mm -hmm. uh, public offer public offer. Mm -hmm. uh, so that hasn't come. Mm -hmm. uh, so probably this is our best hope of seeing mm -hmm. privatization being achieved. Okay. So it said when all is done, is gone, the only thing I'm hold on is hope. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Um, um, there is this, there, there, there are people who ask themselves that um, all these things we are seeing, um, there's someone remote controlling <laughs> the government and this someone has a name and uh, one of his name is called IMF. Mm -hmm. So do you share in the same? To an extent. Okay. And even the all these measures or what we've talked about, mm -hmm. you can sort of tie it to the IMF program that mm. you are in. This IMF program, I uh, started in April 2021. Mm -hmm. It's coming to an end in March next year. Mm. So each and every after every six months there's some reviews, some that, reviews are, that, yes. that is conducted by mm. the IMF staff mm. with the Kenyan authorities. Mm. Uh, there are some targets that mm. are there mm -hmm. that needs to be achieved mm -hmm. and there are some structural benchmarks mm -hmm. that the government needs to adhere to or at least there's some track record mm. implementing those mm. before now the next bout of disbursements. Mm. So you, in a way you can be able to tie that. Mm. And I'm coming even from the fact that the supplementary budget too mm. was a structural benchmark mm. that by March mm -hmm. of this year, mm -hmm. uh, the government should have tabled supplementary Sub budget too. Yes. Mm. For one reason or another, they did not table it that. Mm -hmm. And now we are seeing a supplementary budget. Mm. Two months about later, Emino, yes. mm -hmm. Floods and all this. Mm. And all this, I mean, they played out in the month of April. Mm. So by all indication, mm -hmm. probably we, we, may, we may not have had a supplementary budget too. Mm -hmm. If a significant chunk of what is being, uh, what has driven supplementary budget too, mm -hmm. are things that happened in the month of April. Mm. So, but because of revenue, mm -hmm. uh, remember uh, the primary conditions when we entered this IMF program mm -hmm. uh, from back in April was mm -hmm. now Fiscal consolidation, mm -hmm. which we talked about earlier, yes, but with the revenue raising bias, mm. hence all this national tax policy, mm. medium term revenue strategy. Mm -hmm. yes. So you can sort of tie it mm. uh, to the IMF program that is being executed right now. Okay. The stakes are quite high mm. within the context of the current review. Yes. This is now the seventh the review. Seventh review. Uh, the team was in Nairobi. Mm -hmm last month mm -hmm. early last month mm. before we to call the imf world bank spring meetings mm -hmm. which was from mid-april mm. so i had expected that before the guys went to the spring meetings mm -hmm. at least what you call a staff level agreement mm. will have been reached mm. but looking at this review mm -hmm. which was focusing on december 2023 numbers mm. tax revenue mm -hmm. those are minimum that the government or KRA should have mm -hmm. met, mm. which is around 1.06 trillion. Mm. That wasn't met. Mm -hmm. Primary balance was around 64 billion. Mm -hmm. I doubt that was met. Mm. Probably 
uh, net reserves, mm. FX reserves mm. on a net basis. Mm -hmm. That one was met. Mm. But the other two, mm -hmm. I think those are the those ones were not met. Mm. And also uh, a number of uh, structural benchmarks should have been implemented mm. within the first quarter some of them by April, mm -hmm. that had been met. Yes. Supplementary budget too, should mm -hmm. have been tabled by March. In March, yes. There's another one uh, around ring fencing, petroleum development living. Mm. Uh, this whole subsidy, mm. petrol or stabilization, whichever word you want to mm, use. Yes. It. <laughs> so ideally, mm. parliament should have put some regulations around mm. ring fencing, mm. whatever goes to petroleum development fund levy so mm. that we don't find people uh, Dipping their hands in the, in the jar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Mm. Uh, but by, we haven't seen anything around that. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenya Airways mm -hmm. supposed to at least some options around structuring by April mm. 2024. Mm. Uh, April has come and gone. We haven't seen those. Mm -hmm. So even within the context of the current review, mm -hmm. I understand that uh, there's an ongoing mission mm -hmm. in town mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. just to review where Kenya is mm. in terms of implementing all these issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are some of the issues that mm. IMF will be focusing on. Mm. We may see a few tweaks mm -hmm. in what we call the performance criteria, mm. the tax revenue, primary mm. balance, and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, structural benchmarks, some of them we might see that some of them have been implemented with the delay or now they'll be refreshed mm -hmm. into the next, uh, should be now the focus of the next review in November. Mm. Uh, but I think even if you start looking at uh, supply, uh, the next financial year, mm -hmm. the budget, yes. in, uh, the higher revenue, uh, the reduction in spending, mm. it's all just telling us that uh, there's a big brother. There's a big brother in action. In action, yeah. Okay. I know context is everything and context is very important. But uh, you and I were alive when President Kibaki took over power in 2003. And uh, for those who are not there, uh, at some point, we finance our budget to a team of 97% through, 95, 97% through local revenue or domestic revenue. Uh, the point I'm putting across there was minimal and minimal of, of uh, borrowing. Uh, I know Again, context differs. Uh, what did Kibaki regime did right then that uh, we seem to be missing? Obviously, context uh, differs yes. between Kibaki <laughs> and then mm. into Jubilee administration mm. and right now where we are. Mm. And this is also coming uh, from... Ob obviously, by then, mm -hmm. in terms of the borrowing, we are relying largely with the multilateral okay, lenders, lenders World Bank, is, mm, um, largely mm, uh, the domestic markets mm, were not as deep as it is right mm, now uh, so and when kibaki came into power the focus was now to at least even improve the revenues mm, uh, the measures that are put in place mm -hmm. so when by the time it was now is Time was coming to an end. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, from the global markets, mm -hmm. things changed drastically. Mm -hmm. We saw the global financial crisis to 0809. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw also China mm -hmm. having been admitted mm -hmm. to the World Trade Organization yes. in 2002. Mm -hmm. So it started having even dominance, uh, mm -hmm. even in the global uh, in the global arena. Mm -hmm. And with that, obviously, uh, the trades mm -hmm. tr uh, from a trade external balance mm -hmm. perspective mm -hmm. we started now engaging more with mm -hmm. china mm -hmm. from the trade mm -hmm. and obviously now that meant that they also had to hedge themselves mm -hmm. even with borrowing mm -hmm. so over time we've seen that even the borrowing mm -hmm. uh moving away from the multilateral financing mm -hmm. actually world bank financed mm -hmm. and getting into bilateral lending mm. by one dominant player mm. china mm. we've seen also we tapped into the commercial external commercial mm. borrowing mm -hmm. the euro bonds mm -hmm. uh, from 2014. Mm. so that's pretty much the context that we are in right now mm. the service where kibaki was okay and also mm. vision 2030 mm. the aspirations of vision 2030 was now mm. overall uh, we need to be growing 10 percent a year mm. Have you been doing that? <laughs> Your guess and mine are aligned. <laughs> <laughs> We've not been doing that. Yes. But to jumpstart the economy, mm. 
Jubilee mm. administration, Jubilee mm. one, Jubilee two, mm. uh, they went into this whole infrastructure mm. development. Yes, that's where we saw uh, SGR mm. coming on board from mm. 2014 to 2017. Mm. And even right now, mm -hmm. there's some you still see that this we are still, in as much as the medium term plan four mm. has different priority items mm -hmm. being put in the plate mm -hmm. vis a vis medium term plan three. four, mm -hmm. three years, mm -hmm. big four agenda, mm -hmm. but still, there's still that drive of mm -hmm. our infrastructural development. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Our revenues are not able to support that, that, yes. So, so we have to be outward looking and borrow, looking and borrow yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So that's the context that we are in right now. Okay. Uh, but in as much as we're trying to borrow mm. uh, to jumpstart the economy, mm. obviously 10% is still a pipe dream. An ambi of ambitious, ambitious yes. dream. Mm. We'll just be playing 5%, mm. 5 6% mm. over the next couple of years up until 2030. Okay. Uh, but that's where, that's, I think, what has put us to, to where we are currently. Increase borrowing, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, could you please, for a moment, speak to us about uh, this buyback in February? Uh, did it leave us in a, in a, is a, at a better place as a country, or it didn't leave us at a better place? Did it achieve its objective? Um, and then also try and link it with the behavior of the shilling uh, from then. A uh, number of theories were bandied uh, <laughs> around why the shilling behaved the way it did. So it, it would be interesting to hear your thoughts on some of these issues. I knew you wanted to put me <laughs> on trouble, but no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that has never been the intention, <laughs> and it won't be <laughs> on a life note. Yes. So mm -hmm. the communication all along from June June last year was that uh, I mean we had var we had different uh, iterations. Mm. We we'll do buy back, we we'll not do that. Mm. We we'll do one five hundred million. We we'll do one billion. So mm. there were a number of iterations mm. uh, around the potential buyback. Mm. But by the end of the year, it became clear that uh, because of the external financial conditions, mm -hmm. because if you want to go to the external markets, mm. you first need to look at how the yields or what what is the price mm. that you'll have to pay mm -hmm. as a sovereign yes. as you're going to the international market so mm -hmm. as a december yes the authorities now told us that we not go there mm -hmm. so the plan is now to get all this multilateral money yes the imf money's mm -hmm. disbursement that, that <coughs> came in january yes this this one coming in june mm. uh, world bank initially 1.5 billion mm -hmm. uh, there's some syndicated loans mm -hmm. so you get this money mm -hmm. it is put in an account it's important to mention that's a usd or kenya shilling <laughs> <laughs> these monies are in dollars <laughs> yes so we get the dollars yes obviously they're deposited in uh central bank of kenya mm. We see our reserves going higher ah, yes. a bit. Mm. And then by June, mm. before June 2020, June 24, mm. to be precise, mm. we remove 2 billion from mm -hmm. the FX reserves mm -hmm. and then we pay mm. the Eurobond holders. Yes. Mm. But now the money has been uh, funded mm -hmm. from multilateral lending. Mm. So that was the narrative. Mm. But then one thing happened, uh, Ivory Coast tapped, uh, went to the market. Mm. By going to the market is now the they went uh issued a euro bond mm. uh, around january they about mm. early february benin followed mm. every coast mm. with uh, another issuance mm. around Similar bond, yes. fifty million mm. dollars mm. at the euro bond market yes. mm. so probably now and now that two countries mm. from west africa had gone to the euro bond market mm -hmm. i think kenya saw a window mm. and it sort of piggybacked mm. this issuance from uh, ivory coast mm -hmm. and uh, benin mm. but you see those economies are different they are french west african mm. economies mm. they are their on leaning and currency uh, is tied to the euro currency mm. uh, to the euro currency mm. Uh, they have a pool, their FX reserves is pool. Mm. So there are eight countries within the what you call West African Economic uh, Monetary Union. Mm. So all their FX reserves are pooled. Mm -hmm. uh, their inflation, because it's linked to Euro, mm. so it's kind of low, the service where Kenya was. Mm. So the dynamics by the time Ivory Coast and Benin were going to the Euro bond market were mm -hmm. quite different. Mm -hmm. And by the Kenya now, Put an intent that it wants to buy back mm. 1.5 billion mm. 
Uh, initially, it was uh, yeah, it was around 1.5 billion mm. dollars mm. of this euro bond that is maturing in June. Mm. But now it was now connected mm. with an issuance. Mm. Yes, that it want to buy back up to 1.5 billion, mm -hmm. but this issuance will be successful mm -hmm. upon an issuance of a new euro bond, mm. 2031. Yes. So you can think of it as two legs. Yes. I want to buy back. Mm -hmm. 2024, mm -hmm. 1.5 billion. Mm -hmm. But this one will not be funded from FX reserves. Mm -hmm. I want to issue mm -hmm. another euro bond, mm -hmm. 2031. Mm -hmm. So as they put this mm -hmm. to the holders mm -hmm. that they need to subscribe, mm -hmm. it now came and issued another euro bond. Mm -hmm. But because Kenya is not like the French, West mm -hmm. African countries, mm -hmm. it had a steeper price. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, Benin issued a 2038. Mm -hmm. Euro bond mm. at an 7.96 percent. Mm. This is the coupon. Mm. Kenya now went to the market, mm -hmm. ended up now issuing it raised the 1.5 billion, mm -hmm. but at 9.75 percent coupon. Slightly rate. higher than the Benin Slightly one. Higher than mm. the Benin one. Mm. In as much as this one is 2031, mm -hmm. Benin is quite longer, a longer, than a longer period, period, but period. The lower interest. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So that's the price that Kenya paid. Mm. But at least mm -hmm. it removed the uncertainty. Mm. For me, I was in the camp that from a worst case scenario, mm. with the FX reserves by then it was a six billion. Mm. From a worst case scenario, you just remove two billion mm -hmm. and you pay it off. Mm. That is if from you're the, not able to the FX reserves, FX reserves mm. and you pay it off. Mm. But now that they sourced mm. one point five billion and they borrowed to pay, <laughs> yes. it didn't even have an effect <laughs> yes. in the FX results. Mm. And then around that time is when now tying it to the shilling, mm. where you want to put me into trouble. <laughs> 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 That's the same time that uh, they also issued, this is around February, mm. uh, they had issued an infrastructure bond. Mm. Uh, the FB, period mm -hmm. of sale was from late January to mm. around mid-February. Mm -hmm. And there's usually something around infrastructure bond mm -hmm. is that uh, when you issue an infrastructure bond, mm -hmm. offshore uh, foreign investors, mm -hmm. they prefer infrastructure bonds because it's uh, tax-free, mm -hmm. like the non-infrastructure bond issues. Which attracts tax. Yes, mm -hmm. which attracts tax mm -hmm. between withholding tax mm -hmm. uh, on the interest or mm -hmm. the coupon that mm -hmm. as an investor you receive, yes. between 10% to 15%. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure bond, they don't have that. Mm -hmm. So foreign investors, they like that. Mm -hmm. And this is at a time whereby the Central Bank of Kenya had increased the benchmark rates mm -hmm. by 2%. Mm -hmm. This is around uh, December and then another 0.5% in February. Mm -hmm. So now the assessment by foreign investors, yes. having increased their interest rates, mm -hmm. Kenya having increased its interest rates, mm -hmm. and also the IMF disbursement. Yes. I may have disbursed around six hundred million dollars mm, about mm -hmm, in January. Mm -hmm. So the assessment by foreign investors that was, was loan or grant. Favorable. That was a loan. <laughs> <laughs> this whole the program that we are in yes. every six months there's some mm, disbursement. Some disbursement yeah. Yes. Yeah. We come a dose. We come a dose on a very kifika. That's exactly what happened. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So obviously now investors assessing everything mm. uh them favorably. Mm -hmm. So now there was the money now coming in mm. for the infrastructure bond. Mm -hmm. They are looking at, uh, the CBK was looking at 70 billion, mm -hmm. ended up receiving 280 billion mm. bids. It was like oversubscribed. It was massively. Mm. But now, mm -hmm. uh, for that 280 billion, they mm -hmm. accepted to 40 billion, mm. of which what you're hearing, $1 billion. Mm -hmm. Whatever rate you use mm. uh, could be between one forty billion to one sixty billion mm. was coming from foreign investors. Mm. So that's just giving you a sense. Mm. And that's around the same time that the shilling mm -hmm. appreciated mm. massively. Mm. So you can connect that the sentiment from the buyback. Mm. You can also look at it that because of the inflows that came in mm -hmm. from foreign investors mm -hmm. Uh, that that supported the shilling, mm -hmm. but that massive rally, mm -hmm. I don't think you can explain mm -hmm. it by these two factors. Mm -hmm. From a portfolio inflow perspective, mm -hmm. the infrastructure bond, mm -hmm. we've seen infrastructure bonds 
a number of times mm. but whenever there's an infrastructure bond mm -hmm. if you start doing the uh, if you start doing some correlation mm -hmm. infrastructure bond issues and the shilling performance mm. you don't see this massive spikes mm. so this portfolio inflows yes. as much as it came in mm -hmm. you can't now say that now it supported the shilling mm. I'll come to that. Yes. The other thing that's on the portfolio inflows. Mm -hmm. The other thing is in terms of the sentiment mm. of the shilling that there's a buyback that has happened. Mm -hmm. But at that point, I look at a number of African economies, mm. but the shilling is not as easily tradable mm. as say compared with the South African rand, rand. even the Ugandan shilling, mm. even the Egyptian pound where mm. you can come in, you can come out easily. Mm. So in terms of sentiment, mm -hmm. Who are the people who now drove from a sentiment perspective? Mm. Is it not the foreigners mm. now drove the shilling mm. to appreciate this massively? Mm -hmm. I don't think. Is mm. it not the locals mm -hmm. from a local perspective? Who are holding and now of, uh, who are holding uh, yeah. released, yeah. <laughs> releasing it to <laughs> or, the market. Or was yeah. it the, the Chinese came from holidays? So. <laughs> Leave that one alone. <laughs> now you're putting yourself into trouble. <laughs> yes. But if I look at the numbers, mm -hmm. uh, finally we've just uh, had a look at the what you call the net foreign assets. Because mm. if you look at the uh, foreign exchange markets, mm. we've talked about the foreign reserves. Mm -hmm. That's CBK's money. Mm. That is money. Mm. But also at the real sector, mm -hmm. uh, we have now foreign assets. Banks, mm. they have... Uh, they also have uh, they issue foreign loans. Mm. They have people who deposit their foreign currency, currency. Mm. Uh, be it deposits. Mm. Uh, that number has been going higher mm. with banks. Yes. So the difference between uh, their foreign currency assets mm -hmm. and the foreign currency liabilities mm -hmm. was quite high. Yes. It's around you can look. At, it's around two point three billion. billion. This is as at end of January. Mm. As at end of this February, mm -hmm. this number now went much higher. Much higher. It's like now banks, mm -hmm. in as much as the shilling yes. appreciated, mm -hmm. rather than reducing their dollar assets or their foreign currency assets, yes. it increased. Mm. You know, it's quite different. That This is now the net foreign assets. Mm. It could either mean that you can look at it this way. Yes. Either... People who were speculating on the shilling, mm. who are non-banks, mm. customers, you and I, you and I or yes. corporates, mm. or like that. Mm. Because if you put your currency or your dollar mm -hmm. in a bank, mm -hmm. from a balance sheet perspective, mm. it's a liability. Mm. Because it's money that, yes. as a bank, I owe you yes. as a customer, so mm. it's a liability. Mm. It's either that the foreign currency liabilities mm. reduced. Went down for the net foreign assets to be higher, mm. or from a bank's perspective, mm -hmm. their foreign currency assets mm. went higher, and up. but liabilities remain stagnant yes. here. Because, mm. I mean, it's quite interesting mm -hmm. what is playing out. Mm -hmm. I've been looking at uh, what's happening in Egypt. They mm. devalued their currency. Mm. There was a big 38% mm. uh, devaluation around 6th of March. Mm. And if you look at the net foreign assets mm -hmm. after that event, mm -hmm. uh, it has now turned positive. Mm -hmm better it, mm -hmm. it's still negative mm -hmm. but from a negative 27 billion mm -hmm. right now we're looking at negative 4 billion mm -hmm. that's a massive increase in terms of net foreign assets mm. but the kenyan case is quite peculiar mm. so i still suspect that there was some form of nudging mm. we've had even the governor mm. december mpc by the governor, not mm. the county governors, mm. just to CBK uh, governor, CBK yes. governor. Mm. for the words of doubt, Dr. <laughs> Kamau Thuge, <laughs> we are talking <laughs> about him. Yes, <laughs> saying that by shilling around December mm -hmm. at around 140, 155 levels, mm. that it had shot its equilibrium mm. value. Mm. That's the same time that uh, CBK came in and mm -hmm. increased the central bank rate by two percent, by two percent, yes, mm. but then. It still continued depreciating. It ended at around 159 mm. against the dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, come January, mm -hmm. it even hit a low of 165 mm. against the dollar. Mm. So it could be some nudging mm. from that perspective. Mm. Or the mere fact that the governor came in and said that the shilling had overshot its equilibrium value mm. and then these measures came into place, mm. that 
probably was a signal link to the banks mm. now to move the shilling okay yes. not move mm -hmm. but now to start trading the shilling at a certain level mm. so probably that's the nudging i'm talking about mm. it could be it might be an explicit the government uh, cbk coming to intervene mm -hmm. i still don't have the facts mm -hmm. so uh, let it be clear i still mm. don't have the facts mm -hmm. but we may not even rule it out mm. or the signaling mm. that the government uh, cbk might want to see the shilling to a certain level mm. and now was sort of played out within the banking sector okay and uh, that is also i'm more convinced that that played out because mm. if i look at the volumes that were traded mm. mid-february to end of february mm. the service the volumes that are being in traded this mm -hmm. is now the fx mm -hmm. interbank market mm. between mid-february to end of february, end of february. Mm. the volumes that were traded were staggering oh, the service yes, now mm. what we are seeing there so mm. Obviously, there's a channel that happened, mm. some some form of nudging mm. that now played out in the FX interbank market, and mm. now that led to the uh, shilling to where it is. I walk out of this place without uh, applying my mind on this. Uh, different folks have held a view that uh, that uh, the old regime, the Jubilee One and Two, uh, did what we call propping of the shilling. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a view you share in, or you, you that's why you part company with those who hold such view? <laughs> and do you, do you think uh, it's being done even implicitly in this current regime? Let me play safe and <laughs> quote anecdotal evidence yes. by none other than the current CBK governor yes. who stated that uh, within the last, the last regime, mm -hmm. uh, the last CBK regime, mm -hmm. to, to be clear, yes. That was propping of the shilling, I mm -hmm. think, to the in the order of two billion dollars mm. that was used during that whole regime. Mm. So that's the anecdotal evidence. Yes. Good thing it's out there. Yes. So I will not be You're just stating what has been stated. What has been stated here <laughs> as it is. So, and also it could be its subsequent regime will be coming in and mm. throwing the previous regime under the bus. I mm. mean you've seen it. Yeah, it's very real mm. economics. Yes, so uh, probably that is at play. Mm. But then again, if mm -hmm. you look at uh, the shilling mm -hmm. of uh, from 2014 mm -hmm. with up until you no know, from 2015 2016 mm -hmm. up until last year mm -hmm. uh 2015 is around closing to around 100 mm -hmm. to the dollar mm -hmm. that's on the shilling to the dollar mm -hmm. and as at 2023 mm -hmm. end of 2023 it was around 124 125 mm -hmm. so that's uh the sh the dollar had appreciated mm -hmm. by 25 percent mm -hmm. against the, okay, the, shilling, the shilling yes but if you look at other peers mm. across the continent mm -hmm. uh, based on what has happened mm -hmm. uh, there's been a number of balance of payment shocks that mm. we've seen COVID-19 mm. mm. uh, Russia Ukraine mm. war mm -hmm. and if you sort of tight mm. with that and start looking at it obviously just looking at it from one perspective mm. uh, you can look at it from the current accounts uh, from the trade perspective mm. you can also look at it from the capital flows mm. so that's where the balance of payment uh comes in mm. but it suggests and now that lets credence to the fact that uh, the shilling mm. had been sort of propped up mm. may have been propped up mm. or managed mm. safer to say managed mm. the shilling had been managed mm. uh, in this uh, from that perspective mm. uh and also the imf they normally have uh yearly assessments of how the currencies are mm. uh, they came and sort of put it the shilling mm. as one of the currencies that has been managed there's a stabilized arrangement mm. uh, basically the shilling in any given year mm. is within a two percent band mm. <clears throat> in as much as all these factors are playing out mm. so that now lets credence to what played what actually transpired during mm. jubilee one mm -hmm. jubilee two mm -hmm. or within the previous cbk regime mm. so now tied to the current regime cbk mm -hmm. regime mm -hmm. uh during the vetting process uh this is both the treasury cs mm. cbk governor mm. one thing that was clear mm. during the vetting process was mm. that they would want to see markets 
taking uh, precedence over everything else. Mm. By market, what do I mean? Mm -hmm. That if the market forces coming in to dictate where the shilling should be. You mean money market or commodity market? Foreign exchange market. <laughs> <laughs> it was good to clarify. To clarify yes, 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 yeah, yes, the foreign exchange market. Mm. The market uh, forces coming yes. in at mm. play mm. rather than a big brother mm. with the Sisyphian task of mm. holding the shilling. Mm. Where it's supposed to be mm. because of one or two other issues. Mm -hmm. So that is what came out. Mm. And by all intent and past passes, mm. that's what uh, played out mm. over the course of 2023. Mm -hmm. I saw the shilling weakening by around 21% mm -hmm. against the US dollar. Yes. Just to put some context to mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. and also tying back to the previous point, mm -hmm. is that uh, the FX interbank market had broken. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about FX interbank market, mm -hmm. but let me give you an example. If, as Duncan, you go to Bank A, mm -hmm. you're looking for one million dollars. Mm -hmm. Bank A, from the field of things, you see that they may not be able to meet that demand mm -hmm. of one million dollars, mm -hmm. and then you walk to Bank B. Mm -hmm. uh, you're sourcing for one billion dollars. Uh, mm -hmm. One million dollars. Yes. Uh, they're not able to meet that. So you see, if there's no FX interbank market, mm. what goes out is that there's a demand of $2 million. Mm -hmm. But in actual sense, it's just Duncan mm -hmm. who is seeking $1 million. Mm. But it's like now there's some um, outsized demand, $2 million, mm -hmm. just because you, you are not able to go to Bank A, or Bank A was not able to meet your demand, you went to Bank B. Mm. So... That was the problem, mm. that the FX interbank market was broken. Mm -hmm. And because of that, if as a bank A, mm. customers come to me, they are seeking dollars. Mm -hmm. And because from my supply, I'm not able to meet all this demand. Mm. So I'll keep customers in line, queuing yes. in line for mm -hmm. long. Mm -hmm. And that exacerbates issues. Mm. Uh, we had the shock that happened with the oil. Uh, mm. So oil marketers, imagine, they are trying to source dollars. Mm. Or all these people, Kenya is a net importer country. Mm. So as each and every person who's on the line uh, is queuing, obviously they are going to other banks. Mm. So it brings this, it complicates issues. Mm. So when the, uh, one of the things that was restored mm. was now the FX interbank market. Mm whereby all the banks are able to see their supply demand mm. all the banks they are now able to if bank a is seeking to meet uh 50 million dollars mm -hmm. they cannot be able to do it uh, get that demand mm. within the fx interbank market so mm. that one was fixed mm. so in the process of restoring the FX interbank market. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty much uh, because there was a bit of divergence mm -hmm. between where the official rate was. Mm -hmm. At some point, CBK rate is at 130. Mm -hmm. But if you go to the bank, you're not getting what, uh, dollars at 130, 130 you're getting yes. at 140. So mm -hmm. there's that spread, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what you call uh, the executable rate mm -hmm. and the official rate. Yes. But not the FX interbank market because now you're bringing all these banks together. Mm -hmm. it, somewhat now reduced mm. the spread mm -hmm. between the official rate and also the, the executable, executable yes. rate. Mm. So that in the process of doing that, mm. the shilling now weakened mm. by 21% over mm. the course of last year. Mm. So right now, as it is, are we going to... Uh, we also had anecdotal evidence, the governor saying that they have not propped up the shilling. Mm -hmm. This is a, as a December mm. NPC meeting. Mm. Monetary Policy Committee, mm. after that meeting, so they usually have engagements with the press and mm. analysts. So he said that they have not come to the market mm. from June. Mm. If we take it, if we take that as gospel truth, as gospel truth, mm. they have not managed the shilling. Mm -hmm. But what do we know? What do we know? Yes. <laughs> you know, it's one thing from what you say to what, what, what to know. Mm. But now that's the thing. I mean, we, yes. we can start crunching the numbers, mm -hmm. but if the numbers that is supposed to be crunched, mm -hmm. you are not even getting mm -hmm. them in a timely basis. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can assess from FX reserves mm -hmm. uh, because that's where they pay their external debt. Mm -hmm. They can, that's the firepower mm -hmm. of coming into propping mm -hmm. the currency from but we don't have the integrity mm. so i may not say authoritatively yes why if they have been propping the shilling mm. but i don't think that this number should be put 
should be held in sacrosanct mm. in the sense that we see in Ghana, mm. they go to the market, this is Bank of Ghana. Mm. Even closer home, Bank of Uganda, Bank mm. of Tanzania, mm. they go to the market. Mm. But yes, they may tell us with a lag mm -hmm. that two months ago we sold or we bought the dollars. Mm. It's helpful, mm -hmm. but here we are at a position whereby we don't know what happens. Mm. They might come in and intervene. Mm. What they say that they 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 come in to smooth volatilities. Mm. They may come in and say mm -hmm. they did. They <coughs> sold dollars mm. to smooth volatilities, mm -hmm. uh, X amount of dollars to smooth the volatilities. Uh, even if it's with a lag of one month, it's mm. okay. Mm. But here we are, things are tight lipped, but mm -hmm. you're waiting the next regime mm -hmm. to throw this current regime under the bus. Yes. It's not helpful. Thank you. I know my, my directors on my case that uh, our time is well spent. And there, are, there are three issues that we've not discussed. Oh. Uh, so uh, what we need to do, we, we'll have to discuss them nonetheless because we are here for the for the for the viewers. Um, you've you've you've, you've articulately uh, conversed your, your your thoughts on these issues. But uh, there's one thing I wanted. There's one thing I wanted to ask you uh, is that. Um, do you i know you're not a son of a prophet uh neither am i a son of one but uh do you foresee the shilling uh managing itself or being managed to the levels of 100 or 120 uh, against the dollar in the foreseeable future from your words yes <laughs> i'm not a son of a prophet <laughs> maybe by a son of one <laughs> but as an observer as you observe an observer, and then you yeah. make deductions mm. yeah obviously this big move that you're saying that mm. the shilling is coming from 160 levels mm -hmm. to 130 levels mm -hmm. has been it's it's to use a more polite phrase it's been an interesting mm. phenomenon mm -hmm. uh, we haven't seen that this kind of moves mm. and the next question is the sustainability mm. or are we seeing an end to it mm. or will we see that it will still continue to the 100 120 mm. levels mm. that you're talking about mm. or what will happen next mm -hmm. and as i already said uh, most of the action is happening in the FX interbank market. That's mm. where the big boys, the banks, come mm. in and engage each other mm -hmm. and sort of uh, lead to give us some direction mm. where how the shilling will be. Mm. So from a short term basis, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the flows, uh, this last three weeks, yes. uh, the volumes that are traded in the FX interbank market, mm -hmm. up until two days ago, the volumes were quite low mm. just to give uh, some sense so mm. from that perspective mm -hmm. and we still don't know who are the active players obviously uh we might see cyclical effects coming in mm. uh, some of the corporates mm. as they come in to pay uh, or they are seeking the dollars mm -hmm. to be able to pay dividends. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from the capital max market perspectives. Mm -hmm. uh, the importers. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the other thing about importers, mm -hmm. because you've seen a big move. Mm -hmm. And it now brings in expectations mm -hmm. that let me hold on importing mm -hmm. on expectations that mm -hmm. the shilling might continue mm. favoring me from yes. an import side mm -hmm. uh, so that might also be at play mm. and uh, because of expectations so we are not seeing much activity mm. in the interbank market mm -hmm. or in the foreign exchange market mm. on expectations that 100 120 coming okay. in so oh. that is favoring mm. them but we still need much more data mm. to be able to conclusively mm -hmm. uh, go to the along that line okay uh, so the other thing is the government has been talking about uh, export competitiveness. Mm. How do we do that mm. in this environment where the shilling right now is stronger, mm. around 15%, 18%, mm. how will they be able to achieve that? Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing that happening. Mm. So it's a bit of a balance. Of, you want to in revive the exports mm -hmm. at the same time the shilling is appreciating mm -hmm. you can't have your cake you can't have, yes yes you can exactly have, mm. so a balance needs to be struck a balance needs to be struck mm. uh one 
some things may now have to be scaled down mm. or one must give weight for the other exactly. to achieve the desired results exactly yeah. so mm. in terms of sustainability mm-hmm. uh, back to your words i'm not a son of a prophet, prophet. <laughs> uh, but probably you may see it on a range bound mm. uh, now it hits a high of 130 mm. by heights it's it's low mm. on the shilling so 130 is recent highs from lows of 160 i mm. mean it's, it's it's quite interesting but mm. the shilling has hit a high of recent highs of 130s mm-hmm. but it's slowly within 135 they about mm. so that's where we, it will play and now that's the thing is that if you people are not able to understand what really caused that big drive mm. you are not able you are not able to extrapolate mm. how mm. the shilling will play mm. so I'm proud that mm. I do not know what will happen mm-hmm. because <laughs> I'll be I'll, I'll I'll be putting myself into some uh, hot soup. Okay. So okay. Projection. So we will not help you put yourself in hot soup. <laughs> um, the second last thing that we are de- we are, we we have to have conversation on before we finish is that um, um, recently um, and this one I might uh, indirectly put you uh, uh-huh. in the hot soup. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, we know there is uh, there are two more reviews IMF reviews uh, yeah uh, the the eighth and the ninth yes um, before the end yes. of the program yeah um, and uh, this is the second time I know there are a number of reforms that uh, IMF wanted Kenya to pursue uh, as part of milestones towards uh, execution of the of the IMF program uh, and they are heavily leaning towards um, reforms within revenue. Uh, raising measures and that is where this enhanced taxation uh, is domiciled but we've seen the country being called to order to and being given an exclusive day to plant trees uh, and <laughs> some of us who follow you uh, on social media uh, might have come across this as part of your tweet and part of your uh, your post on linkedin uh why did this uh, tree planting deserve such a national attention to the extent that it's been declared a holiday is it part of fulfilling the uh the reforms within the context of P, uh, of imf speak to us about this oh wow <laughs> <laughs> this is a whole show on its own but anyway yes uh, for the benefit of our viewers, yes. uh, we've been talking about this IMF program that we started in April 2021. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the actual financing, because mm-hmm. we enter into a program mm-hmm. and then we're given some specific financing. Mm-hmm. So it was a blended. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a extended credit facility mm-hmm. and extended fund facility, EFF. What is the difference EFF. for the benefit of those who went to Kanyadiang Geography <laughs> Institute? Of- okay, <laughs> let's step back. Yes. Uh, that's why I say it's that a show it's, its it's a show on its own. Yes, the IMF mm-hmm. uh, gives financing mm-hmm. uh, either from its general resource account. Mm-hmm. This is basically uh, this is now its usual way of funding. Of funding, yes. Mm. This is the GRA, mm. or it gives on concessional terms. Mm. This is from the poverty. Reduction and Growth Trust mm. (PRGT). Mm. So GRA or General Revenue uh, Resource, Resource Account, account yes. <clears throat> PRGT mm. (Poverty Reduction Production. and Growth Trust) Trust yes. Concessional terms. Mm. So uh, Kenya mm. entered into a program, mm. but now they had to blend mm. the extended fund facility. Mm-hmm. The EFF mm-hmm. is from the GRA. Mm-hmm. And the extended credit facility, the ECF, mm-hmm. is from the PRGT. PRGT yes. Yes. So it's some, somewhat like a blend. Mm. Uh, so we started it, uh, and obviously, you know, but for the benefit of our viewers, yes. <laughs> the IMF gives financing mm-hmm. with what we call special drawing rights, mm. SDR. Mm. So it's a reserve yes. asset, yes. which they give, which they now extend, extend to, to the LNDs. To mm. the LNDs. Mm. And which is now converted to dollars, mm. so it keeps on changing. So mm. initially, this program we are meant to have received cumulatively uh, 1.6 mm. billion mm. SDRs mm. 
over the course of initially it was a 38 month program mm -hmm. but now uh, in the context of the fifth review mm -hmm. they saw a need of extending it mm -hmm by another 10 months mm. so from the initial 38, 38 to months, 48 months now we're looking at a 48 month mm. uh time frame mm. which is four years which is four years mm. from mm. april 2021 yes. to now march 2025 mm. so within a four-year four program mm. and also within that context we had augmentation mm. basically from 1.6 billion mm -hmm. sdr they mm. increased it further mm. uh so and also the imf mm -hmm. remember 2021 uh within the covid mm, period. period yes and then they sort of had exceptional or they sort of had for all the quarters mm. for all the alloc or how imf works it's like a circle mm. if you have uh one million there and then the assets of the circle is around or the pool that mm. they cannot be able to finance is mm -hmm. around uh, 1 billion yes so it's like now your 1 million is 1% 1 1% 1 quarter. Yes. Mm. so even the imf sort mm. of works that mm. way so with within covid-19 mm -hmm. so there was a, some special uh funding or mm. it was just a one off mm. that they for every allocation you have mm -hmm. entitled so all the countries were given. Mm. Uh, so Kenya received ours in. It was kind of a boost. It's kind of a boost mm. uh, just to assist countries to manage or the COVID or manage the COVID shock, yeah. shocks. Yes. Mm. So what happened is some of the countries they, re they really didn't need these monies. Mm. The big countries which had higher quarters. Mm. So they sort of now are extending mm. or the IMF now came with what is a resiliency, mm. sustainability facility. Yes. So for this big countries mm -hmm. that they know they didn't need this special allocation mm -hmm. not to transfer it yes, to this and from mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. there's a new facility that came mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. so imf now linked this resilience and sustainability mm -hmm. trust mm -hmm. uh, so the financing from that mm -hmm. is now with climate agenda mm -hmm. heavily mm -hmm. So as we speak right now, mm -hmm. 18 countries mm -hmm. have tapped into the RSF, mm. Resiliency and Sustainability Financing, Financing yes. mm. from this pool. Mm. So Kenya being one of them. Kenya being one of them. Okay. Mm. So fifth review, mm -hmm. uh, which happened July last year, mm -hmm. uh, which we got the uh, May last year, mm -hmm. this basement came in July last year. Now Kenya entered into an RSF mm. for the IMF, mm. all climate financing and everything climate agenda mm. so there are a number of reforms that are required within the rsf context mm -hmm. this one ecf eff mm. is now the fiscal consolidation mm. uh soe's mm. state on uh, privatization uh, privatization yes. everything mm. but mm. this one is specifically for climate mm. <laughs> so six <laughs> during six review yes six review yes. obviously uh this happened last year november mm. Mm. Uh, IMF came in town, mm. uh, and I remember 6th of November, uh, Kenya Gazette went out that there's a national tree planting. Mm. And it was so easy now to tie uh, the holiday mm. to the RSF, Yes, if you look at it within this context of mm. RSF, because mm. how many years has Kenya been independent? Over 60, 60 years. It's We've 60. never had this mm. one of But all along, we are into an From the RSF, blues. Yes, RSF no. program. Yes. And one of the agendas is all this, uh, at least increasing the, the tree, tree cover, cover yes. and mm. everything. Mm. So you can easily tie. But mm. I don't think we needed a holiday for that. But here we are. Mm -hmm. We had a holiday, mm -hmm. 13th of November. Mm. To purposely plant trees. To purposely plant trees. Ostensibly to improve our tree cover. Yes. Oh, okay. And to be honest, mm. I didn't plant trees because I didn't get the seedlings. <laughs> yes. We have just told a week before yes. how was I supposed to get seedlings. I live mm. in a concrete jungle. Yes. I don't have a place where I was demarcated by the government for us for to go and planting. plant yes. trees. Yes. Mm. So I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And even today, I've not done that okay. because mm. we were just told two days ago. Yes. And three days later, mm -hmm. Staff level agreement by the IMF was reached. Mm. That is 16th, 16th, 16th of, November. of November. Yes. Those are 2023. Yes. Mm. Press release that came. Mm. The IMF staff has reached a staff level agreement mm -hmm. with IMF. Yes. Which was now which now unlocked unlocked the 600 million mm -hmm. dollars that we received mm -hmm. in uh, January. Mm -hmm. 
So now it was linked to RSF. Uh, so the trees yes. obviously mm. are linked to RSF. Okay. And so the authorities, mm. Kenyan authorities, taking photos mm. of them planting trees, which is good. Uh, <laughs> public servants yes. they also planted their fair share mm. trees, which mm -hmm. is good, by the way. Mm. Uh, it's only that you can now get a connection mm -hmm. that because of this RSF, mm -hmm. uh, there are reforms mm. that needs to be implemented mm -hmm. with its subsequent reviews mm. and hence the tree planting. Before we come to the second uh, trip, national tree planting uh, venture, uh, as a country, were we given some sort of a report uh, that uh, on the 13th November event, uh, 15 million trees were planted hypothetically and we were targeting this uh, and even now uh, the, the, the 10th uh, May has has there been some sort of report that uh, yes go ye and plant trees and we are targeting 10 million trees and we provided 30 million trees is that is has there been such such kind of uh, an engagement uh, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know, probably your viewers can assist us with that, but to the best of my knowledge, yes. I haven't seen that report coming okay. out. Mm -hmm. uh, I just know that this time around we are expected to plant each of us five trees. Mm -hmm. uh, so assumption is 40 million of us, mm. So because the target is 200 million trees to be planted today. Mm. I don't know where, mm -hmm. I don't know where I get the seedlings, but that's the target. Mm. Uh, so, but I haven't encountered okay. such a report, but I just know the targets. Uh, again, again, I know you, from your background, you and I are never seons of uh, profits. Uh, but we can, can we comfortably say that this is not the last time we're having a national tree planting day? So long as we are within the uh, RSF framework. Yes. There's a likelihood that we'll still get another tree planting day. Okay. Uh, so we're just looking at it every six months. Mm -hmm. But finally, mm -hmm. and this is the thing, mm -hmm. because 18 countries mm -hmm. have received funding under the RST. Mm -hmm. This is the Resilience mm -hmm. RSF, mm -hmm. which, Resilience is the climate, yes, yes. which is now the climate-oriented mm. uh, uh, financing. But none of them, they normally, none of them, to the best of my knowledge, mm -hmm. Have been calling tree planting citizen days to to plant their trees. Yes. Mm. So I don't know what's peculiar with Kenya. Mm. I really don't know mm -hmm. to the extent that a holiday is called two days mm. uh, to the event. Mm. People had made their plans. Uh, the potential people who might ordinarily adhere to those uh, kind of instructions. Mm -hmm. This is now the civil servants. The yes employees within the public sector mm -hmm. obviously they had engagements yes it's not that friday was just an idle, an idle day, day and yes. they just mm. kept busy to plant trees yes. no but i don't think that this thing was really planned out mm. but if you connect the dots mm. that the imf mission team is in town right now mm -hmm. and then people are just told okay everyone go plant 200 million 200 million trees, trees yes it's easy to connect. Do we know when the la the next staff level meeting is going to happen? I know it's around November. November. Uh, this is now the eighth review. Mm -hmm. It's around November. Yes. Uh, let me not preempt that there could be another tree planting, tree day. planting day or uh, <laughs> national uh, watering, whatever. Yes. I think it's, there's some mm -hmm. tricking. The first one was national tree planting day. Mm -hmm. Today is a national tree growing day. In I honor of those people who are affected by floods. Also in honor. Mm. I mean, it's good. Mm to honor the victims yes but i think that we need to be genuine mm. about honoring the victims mm. of the floods mm. rather than calling for a holiday mm. we may have something in the order of uh, if we may if i may just use my imagination mm. kenyans for kenyans remember mm. 2011 yes, yes, yes. we had the drought yes and, uh, one point something billion was collected and the corporate mm. came out and yes. then they came up with the drive yes and then you can sort of work things around that. Yes. And also within the COVID-19, yes. uh, there was something that came yeah. up with the private sector. Yes. I think we may need to do it that way mm. than kidding ourselves mm. that we want to honor the flood victims yes. because it's with us. It might not affect Duncan mm. who lives in a certain place, mm. but because of the changing weather patterns, yes. who knows, I might be... In Alifis, and it has also affected people. It's in Alifis, yes. In the low mm. income. Just across places, here in Runda, also, yes. Exactly. Mm. So, how do we genuinely mm. 
go about way and it's not from a reactionary perspective mm. we need to be a bit proactive around mm. that so that is how we need to this may not even be the last bout of floods mm. that we're getting mm -hmm. we've been getting droughts we are used yes. to one form of extreme weather mm. now we're getting the other, other extreme yes. weather mm. this is floods we've never seen that mm. but there are better ways of doing that mm. rather than uh planting trees or thank you yeah thank you uh, um, wow as the point uh, we do not uh belittle the point that uh there's need to sympathize with the victims of the floods in fact we extend our sympathy and condolences to those who lost their lives and um, for those who in one way or the other were affected we we join the government in sympathizing uh with them uh however we are aligned to the thoughts shared by our whole, by our guests that uh, perhaps it's about time that we will be serious and change how we go about our, our, our business with respect to some of these things. Uh, the last bit that we mentioned, we are, I want to touch briefly as we, as we, as we end this, this, this particular show is, and I know I'll come uh, at some opportune moment once the finance uh, bill is out, we'll arrange and have a conversation around that. So that's why I'm shelving part of the, the wider discussion of the budget. Uh, but, uh, you and I have uh, the benefit of working in this space for some time. You've had the benefit of seeing the, the BPS 2024 and uh, the budget policy statement, uh, 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 the estimates that were laid in, in Parliament um, uh, that would be enacted by end of June 30th. Uh, as to our viewers, what should Kenyans uh, look forward to in this budget? Are we, are we seeing... Um, even if you look at the medium-term uh, revenue strategy, are we, are we seeing some proposals? Even as we await the finance bill, are we seeing indications that the gov that life will be bearable, or uh, we should brace up ourselves for hard times? Uh, from a revenue raising perspective, mm -hmm. I think we, we may lean heavily on the medium-term revenue strategy. Mm -hmm. By all indication is that uh, we might see finance bill being tabled on Monday, thirteenth mm. of May. Yes, most likely. Uh, most likely, mm -hmm. uh, based on the uh, communication that came mm. from the Speaker of the National Assembly, mm -hmm. and this is because the finance bill ordinarily should have been around the time that uh, the, the budget est estimates, estimates were laid in Parliament. Yes, that also we should have had the first reading of the finance bill mm. and we know that parliament is, went on recess right mm -hmm. after that mm -hmm. so this is a special meeting a special sitting that has been called mm -hmm. obviously probably related with the ongoing uh, impeachment mm. proceedings mm -hmm. against uh, the cs for mm. agriculture yes but still uh the finance bill is now that's the opportunity that we can see the finance bill 2024 mm. but as we speak right now we've mm. not seen it mm. the finance bill 2024. Out, yes yes uh, but looking at the targeted revenue collection mm -hmm. for the next financial year mm -hmm. we're looking at an increase of 500 billion mm. uh, shillings yes from where we are right mm. now mm -hmm. The current financial year to the next financial year yes a bit of it is leaning on organic growth mm. uh, that expectations that mm -hmm. next year yes. the next financial year the yes. growth will be will continue growing mm. which will support even uh, the revenues mm -hmm. in an organic way yes but also as a, a, the other bit of it will now be funded mm. or the measures that will be proposed in the finance bill 2024 yes. which will now be enacted as finance act 2024 mm -hmm. So, medium-term revenue strategy talks a, a bit of uh, aligning the corporate income tax mm. with the higher tax band of mm. uh, pay-as-you-earn. Yes. So, the pay-as-you-earn right now at 5%. Mm. Uh, for the sake of our viewers, this guy is on the higher tax bands, <laughs> but that's uh, beside the point. <laughs> uh, so, we have uh, the 35%, yes. the higher tax band in the pay as you earn, mm -hmm. our corporate income tax is 30%. Yes. But now, the medium-term revenue strategy is talking about reducing it further, mm -hmm. uh, the corporate income tax to 25%. Mm. It may not be fully within the context of finance built in 2024, yes. but subsequently yes. upon implementation of the medium-term revenue strategy, mm. and also now reducing even the medium, uh, the pay as you earn, mm. the 
higher tax ban from 35% mm -hmm. back to 25% to align with the corporate income tax. Mm. But remember this, uh, where you guys are affected at 35%, mm. uh, this one was just implemented <laughs> within the context of the Finance Act 2023. Yes. But now we are seeing it being now, uh, all this is now being undone mm. after 12 months. Mm. So the issue around predictability and predictability of the tax proposal. So mm that's coming into the fall. The other thing is now the value added tax. 16% mm. uh, regionally mm. is the lowest. It's the lowest, yes. Because our peers are 18%, 18 yeah. mm -hmm. and all that. Mm. Value added tax is mm. expected now to come lower mm. uh, by 14%. Mm. It may be gradually, mm -hmm. uh, medium term, re uh, medium term revenue strategy talks of a gradual approach mm of lowering the value added tax from 16% as it is to 14% mm. by FY 26-27. Yes. So you probably may see 1% this year, 0.5%. Mm. I don't yeah, know yeah, what yes. mm. is in mind. Mm. And yeah, but so but now the end goal of that you lower mm -hmm. the tax base or the tax the the tax rates with that aim of now increasing compliance mm. so that you can be able to net in the much needed revenue so that's pretty much the mm. thesis that is playing out mm. a number of proposals that we saw uh, within the context of uh, medium term revenue strategies now around minimum tax mm. uh, the informal sector mm -hmm. uh, there's that five percent in mm -hmm. terms of uh, agricultural produce yes uh, as you take them uh, so pretty much looking at aggregating mm -hmm. agricultural produce as you take it to the market, yes. five percent withholding tax. So those are some of the things mm. that we can borrow from the medium term revenue strategy yes. mm -hmm. to indicate give indications as indication of, yes, of what will come uh, out in the, the revenue raising market. measures as we do as we look forward to the finance bill. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, we would we would spare our best time for the, con the upcoming conversation on the budget and. Uh, uh, this is the point where we come uh, to an end of this conversation. Uh, it's been a very ins insightful conversation, and some of us who are slow learners, <laughs> we have to rewatch this uh, with a pen and a notebook so that at least we we try and understand. Um, and and uh, as we come to a close for, of this show, uh, this is the point that I would ask you to look at this camera and and share with us your last thoughts. Na hata kama ukona uko na watu wa Western tu masalamu atuta kulipisha. Uh, then we will come to an, an end for this particular conversation. Uh, thanks, uh, Duncan, for having me. Uh, it was a pleasure being a guest this time round. And just unpacking uh, issues that have played out in the context of the supplementary budget too, and also the next uh, year's financial, financial year's budget. It's not, you know, the budget comes alive when you see the CS uh, mm. this time around Professor Njugun and Dungu going to parliament with the briefcase and the flower here and going to table the parliament, uh, table the budget. But this, that's normally the anticlimax. The mm. budget is a process that's from August yes. up until uh, the moment that the CS goes to table uh, the budget estimates and also during the implementation of that. So it's just, it, it's Im equally important as citizens that we al are alive of what's happening. We cannot be able to chime in with our views and who knows uh, what kind of proposals that might come from the public mm. and we might see them implemented even on the spending side or even in the revenue raising measures. As we have said, uh, we are still keeping an eye on the finance bill 2024. That's where lots of public participation usually comes in. Mm. Obviously, we may have our, our say, but at the end of the day, you know, the government have its way, mm. what is wrong with, with the affordable housing levy. But that notwithstanding, it's equally important as citizens to be, partici to be active participants within the budget cycle so that we can now be able to improve our country for the better. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Churchill. Indeed, it's been an honor to host you at The Point. Um, the Point is a podcast chat show where we have conversations with thought leaders on various issues that affect um, the happenings and the lives of the people uh, in this country and beyond. 
and uh, our main mission is to educate, inform, and impact lives. So uh, with this, uh, they say that um, all is well, that starts well and ends well. And clearly, we cannot exhaust this conversation with Churchill, and we are looking forward to having more and more of this in the coming days. For the people who have not subscribed to the, the point, we call upon you and request you to subscribe to the point, and also follow us on our X uh, handle, uh, the point uh, TV show, for engagement, and uh, you can also make suggestions of the people you want to see on the show. We, it's our duty to ensure that we reach out to them and have them on the show, to ensure that we uh, pursue and achieve this very objective of impacting, educating, and transforming society. Until we do this some other time, I've been your host, Duncan, and thank you so much for the entire team that made this possible, uh, the production team at the point, and all our guests. Uh, we thank you so much for making this pos uh, possible. Otherwise, thank you so much. Until we do this some other time, Asante Sana. Chachil. Shukran. Thank you. Shukran.